Chapter 11, The Trial, 1973. Meanwhile, knowing I couldn't go to Chino because my trial with Bo started soon, Baba was transferred to Chino without me to start the reorganization process of the NF Constitution. There were some intelligent minds working on changing parts of the Constitution. One such part was the section that stated that any person who killed an enemy of the NF would automatically become a captain. You can imagine the rise in body count and increase in captain's numbers without this part being changed. It was amended to read that the general would be the only person who could officially promote anyone to the rank of captain. After that change, some of the enemies of the NF were breathing easier. Early one Monday morning, Bo and I were told we'd be going to court. We weren't shocked. We expected it sooner or later. A couple of San Joaquin Sheriff's deputies drew the short straws to transport us to jail. When we arrived, we were put in jumpsuits and leg and wrist restraints. It was only a half an hour ride to the county jail. But after being locked down behind the walls for the past eight months, we looked forward to the ride. It was a real treat to get outside. It was early spring and sunny and warm. Fresh green leaves were sprouting on the trees and there were colorful, brilliant flowers blooming on the freeway medium stri strips along the way. Off the freeway and onto the city streets, the scenery was complemented by the beautiful women headed to unknown destinations, dressed in springtime outfits. Yeah, the trip was over, was an overdue treat. This destination, not so much. We finally arrived in the underground garage of the courthouse jail. Once inside, we were relieved of the shackles and put in a holding cell awaiting our first appearance. We were assigned attorneys and eventually housed in the county jail for the duration of the trial. While in the holding cell, I drifted into deep thought. Here I was again in another holding cell, pondering my future as I saw it. I was still a kid in mind and heart. I wanted to belong, to make my mark, to prove myself to my gang peers. I wasn't considering the much larger picture. I really didn't take it to heart that there was no turning back from the path I turned and I was sealing my own fate. I was delivering myself into a void where the journey ahead altered the course of not only my life but many others as well. There would be overwhelming consequences and far-reaching effects. I was binding myself to a destiny of inevitable sorrow and heartbreak. I wasn't thinking of that at the time though. I just didn't care about anything except my loyalty to the familia. My attorney had told me that Mac, one of our own, had in fact testified against Bo and me during the grand jury investigation. Mac, the same guy who I hauled across the TV room floor while he was unconscious from his beating. This was how he showed his gratitude. This was how he professed his loyalty. Well, Mac, I thought you are on your own as a traitor to the Nuestra Familia. The news media had painted a picture of me as an NF hitman on a mission because I had come from San Quentin at the time. I was looking at a possible seven of life and found guilty. That time could turn into 20 at the most. Again, I was asking myself, what the hell was I thinking? When the trial began and knowing what the DA had for ammunition against us, we knew we were fighting a losing battle from the start. We went ahead to the jury trial anyway. Two weeks into the trial, the DA came to me with a deal that would reduce my charges to manslaughter. If I took it, I'd only be looking at one to 15 years. My pride and my loyalty to a brother NF stood in the way. I asked if Bo was offered the same deal. My attorney told me he didn't know, so I turned it down. When I saw Bo, I asked him if he had been offered the same deal and he said he hadn't. He was upset when I told him what they had offered me. We took it to trial because the deal hadn't included both of us. We would go down like family. It took more than a month, including all the pretrial bickering back and forth of the attorneys before an actual verdict was rendered. The trial itself only took two days and the guilty verdicts were immediate. We both felt like we had been railroaded. When the judge came into the court to pronounce sentence, we both refused in defiance to stand up. The judge proceeded to admonish us as to courtroom etiquette and asked that we stand up again. We declined as a statement 
that we didn't want any part of this madness and we told the judge so. The judge determined that he was being disrespected and commenced to sentence us both to seven to life for the killing of trash men. Back at DVI, Peanut, the captain, got himself put in the hole for suspicion of inmate assault. Peanut was stirring up a hornet's nest by trying to continue to run the yard by himself from the hole or in a shoebox, as they say. Peanut's first lieutenant, Nini, was also in the hole when I got back from court. Peanut's second lieutenant also was rounded up on the same charges as Peanut. That left my mind, that left my friend Larry as the next in line for the first lieutenant in charge of the main line. The reason for a constitution in an organization is to keep order, is to keep guys in line and to provide a chain of command so members like Peanut, who was basically out of commission by being in the hole from trying to play control freak. Larry was very capable of taking charge as a leader, but Peanut didn't like not being in control and tried to interfere with operations of the family. He even solidified, he even so solicited to have Larry hit to initiate a power struggle. This caused animosity between the brothers, both on the main line and in the hole. Both also and any were on Peanut to let him stop, to let it, correction. Both also and Nini were on Peanut to let it go and stop trying to screw things up in the organization. Nobody wanted to help Peanut with this private little coup. Peanut asked me how I felt about the tension between him and Larry, testing me on where I stood. I thought to myself, Larry is a good friend of mine, but Peanut is the captain and head man for our immediate area. I told Peanut that I didn't want to be in the middle of the situation and decline to be a part of it. After Baba went to Chino, everyone knew major changes were coming down. There was a lot of tension in the ranks because nobody knew what to expect. To add to the tension, more NF members were finding their way to the hole for various reasons. Because of the increase in the numbers of the NF brothers, the senior members decided to put the lieutenants into the first cell on each tier where NFs were housed. This was done for two reasons. One was to keep an ear on staff and two, to monitor the comings and goings on the tier. When I got back from court, my old cell had been repaired and I was moved back there. Sharky was still next door and we brought each other up to date on what had been going on. I was glad the trial was over and just glad to be back at DVI. Sharky was from Salinas and transferred from CMC, California Men's Colony, San Luis Obispo after a stabbing incident. He was part Filipino and part Mexican. He had a cool, collected demeanor. He was patient enough to take on the task of becoming correction. He was patient enough to take on the task of beginning to school me on the ways of the organization, which began with my abrasive attitude. He explained to me that in order to survive and make my way, I'd have to learn how to control this. I was still a wild youngster, but I guess he saw something in me, maybe potential as a future leader. Whatever it was, he took the time and accepted the challenge. Time was something we had plenty of. He taught me how to read and showed me the importance of loyalty and dedication to the organization, as well as the do's and don'ts. Sharky was a lot more experienced than I was, and I appreciated him taking the time to do all of that. Over the months, I began to understand about controlling my anger and being able to stay in control of various situations. Sharky helped me to understand that I didn't have friends or family in the organization, only brothers. When he explained this, it helped me to understand better my personal conflict regarding the power struggle between Larry and Peanut. Things were still tense on the tier, and I knew it would be best if I didn't get involved with Larry Peanut's situation even though the majority were siding with Peanut. To my surprise, one afternoon, my cousin, little boy from Oakland, arrived on the tier. It had been a while since I last seen him, and it was good to see him now. He was a few cells down from me, so the kites were going back and forth between us. He was still in the same, or he was still the same old boy that I'd known throughout the years. 